Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. Uh, this is session number 27. I am Samir Mehta, your moderator, and we have another very interesting and uh, genuinely challenging case for you. In the meantime, uh, the technical advancement to make uh, note of this month is that you can now go and get the CCC Live Cases iPad application on the iTunes App Store. Samin, uh, good morning. Uh, I see you have another uh, very challenging uh, unprotected uh, left main case. Of course, um, great. And uh, with this iPad application uh, getting a popularity just since last uh, uh, few days. It has been uh, over like 500 applications they have uh, used and we actually haven't had a live case. Uh, we expect that number uh, rapidly climbing to um, in thousands knowing that our uh, monthly uh, case, the total archives, um, the, the active live as well as archives are crossing about 5,000 to 6,000 per episode. So this will be a very nice addition. And with that note, uh, for our this case number 13 with heart.org, I uh, take, uh, you know, welcome my cath lab staff and of course, uh, uh, Anu and uh, the fellow here. Samin, we also start today the second year of our partnership with the heart.org, uh, session number 13. Absolutely, absolutely. And that has been a, a great experience and particularly the widening the horizon of uh, scope of this teaching. That has been a great, um, a great addition and actually the more and more people are recognizing any meetings we go that how this has been kind of free lunch for majority of them. Well, you're also, I heard, doing a, a live meeting over the weekend to a large meeting in India. That is correct. Yeah, we, it's a lot of these live uh, meetings are coming up uh, and it's Saturday morning uh, because of the time difference and so. All right, with that note, I think we take uh, our case uh, uh, and I, what we decided, although we are late today, about six minutes, but uh, we'll make it very clear and I, you know, we need to follow the timelines and basically that uh, by 8.15 to 8.20, anywhere between that time, we should start doing the case, uh, per actually performing the case, so it gives us more time. So that will lead to that whatever discussion is about 10, 12 minutes uh, for the slide presentation. The point is that many of these slides, although I skip a little faster, but they're all available archives so that people can go back and get a little more details of the message from the slide, but I'll, I always give the key important message. Now, with that note, I think we can uh, get our case slide of today. This is the patient uh, who is a 68-year-old male with a prior PCI of RCA in uh, uh, 1999. At that time, had a moderate left main disease actually documented, had a progressive dyspnea and exertion crescendo angina, class 2, and stress test revealed significant large area of ischemia involving both anterior and inferior wall with a mild LV dysfunction. And of course, the cath confirmed and we'll show you that. And patient has prior history of diabetes, hypertension, and uh, emphysema, and has a remo remote history of GI bleed. Uh, has, as I mentioned, he has PCI of the RCA and good uh, medical therapy as shown there. Now, this uh, an underwent cardiac cath, and actually we'll just uh, go over with the uh, cath very quickly. Um, maybe Anu can go there. Samin, uh, before that, uh, in 1999, did you consider cardiac surgery for this patient? Well, this is, uh, again, we don't have the, uh, the exact uh, angiogram, but we are told by the referring physician uh, that it was told as a moderate left main. That's the word was used, moderate left main, just 50%, so that uh, nothing was done at that time. All and right, Anu, you're yeah. showing us the angiogram? <clears throat> Uh, anterolateral uh, apicalus and inferior was slightly mild, but overall just mild LV dysfunction. This is his RCA. His stents are all good. It's a dominant RCA, large size, posterolaterals, and uh, if you see the PDA, maybe ostium uh, moderate disease. Look at the bare metals. Yeah, you have no nice. intimal hyperplasia on bare metal. Moderate <laughs> calcification of the right. I'm yes, sure in the uh, uh, stent. And th this is what you see is a long left main and uh, you have distal left main. Uh, I think I can show you a better picture. Uh, it's right. coming up. But more important in the LAD, again, it's 30 to 50 prox to mid. Uh, in the mid, <coughs> another 50 percent disease. So you could say it is just uh, mild to moderate disease in right. the entire vessel. And you can also see some cal uh, calcium, mild calcium. 
but more important I think in this view you can see how the distal left main tapers all um, uh, 70 80 percent distal and then the highlateral moderate size vessel another 80 percent uh, lesion. Since we had a large size uh, RCA lot of postolateral uh, large size postolaterals we know the circle will be small. So, you have a moderate size uh, OM that uh, is shown here. Yep, with that note, uh, uh, as clearly, so that basically that is what it is now the moderate uh, LED disease and uh, RCA is good. The question was just because of the reference physician, and I would say we calculated the syntax score which was 18 uh, in our lab. Once you have a low syntax score, particularly with the left main, and I will show you the data, very, very strong that PCI is as good as, if not better, than cabbage in this situation. So, we would have done the cabbage, I mean PCI. But the, the cardiologist wanted to, a referring cardiologist wanted to discuss the option of the cabbage versus the PCI with the patient. So, the patient was taken out of the room, uh, this was just few days ago with the plan that uh, we will come back, one decision was made and then when we showed him the, our institutional data as you know that we do about 20 uh, of the 450 cases per month, about 20 to 25 are unprotected left main with excellent acute results and of course, with the uh, reasonable syntax score even long term results. So, that uh, they were convinced and the patient is here for this particular purpose of the left main intervention and guided by IVAS. Now, if we put into the appropriateness criteria, knowing that remember appropriateness criteria actually the took the left main as inappropriate because they should go for cabbage. But having taken this uh, considering left main let us say only just as a one vessel disease because this patient has a high risk ischemia with a moderate symptoms it still will be appropriate. If you consider left main just as a one vessel, it because of ischemia will be highly uh, appropriate uh, by every means, uh, uh, the not considering that left main intervention is inappropriate. Now, having said that, uh, particularly in this case. Uh, Samin, this is the new segment which we had started. I, I put this uh, up for uh, Anu. What are the technical challenges you think you are going to confront in this case? Yeah, so if you look at this uh, angiogram, um, okay. you have a long left main and the lesion is uh, distal. So, distal uh, likely uh, involving only LED. So, important thing is what is the guide I think that we have to use in this kind of a particular case. Once you have a long left main, um, I think a uh, VODA curve would be probably a better so that it will sit in a in the vessel almost reaching the mid portion of the left main rather than using a C curve. C curve usually will stay in the ostium uh, not giving us a lot of support. Uh, then also the uh, what is what would be the guide uh, size of the uh, guide catheter. Uh, always a question when you are doing a left main, when is distal left main, uh, when there is bifurcation involved question always come do you go with 6 French, 7 French or uh, 8 French, 8 French even if there is involvement of uh, you know trifurcating distal left main. But in this situation I think looking at the way the, dis, uh, the distal left main and the uh, involvement of the lesion uh, we could be probably comfortable in uh, using 6 French rather than uh, even using a 7 French since the goal would be to stent across uh, left main to the LAD. Uh, then which case would you use a 7 French? Uh, 7 French uh, suppose uh, you have distal left main and there is involvement of the LAD uh, definite uh, if, even if there is moderate uh, circumflex disease or we know there is a definitely a circumflex osteal disease where we know we may end up using a double stent strategy whatever the strategy is whether it is a kissing stent uh, or uh, you are going to do. Uh, you know T stent strategy you definitely go with 7 French. So, you will be able to accommodate 2 stents and your kissing balloon and everything will be done um, relatively easy. Okay. And then always the, uh, the, the if we, we are doing a stent across strategy uh, how do we protect the side branch. Uh, since uh, we are talking uh, uh, you know major 2 major branches which is a circ and the high lateral uh, there is always this uh, fear do we do a leave a side branch in this uh, in this uh, major vessels and if we are going to leave a uh, side, uh, you know side branch wire which is the right side branch wire that we are going to do that uh, though there is question that uh, glide wire should not be left i think uh, right now uh, we comfortably leave a, a side branch uh, wire and glide wire probably is better um, to leave it in the 
side branch so that we can trap it and if at all there is there is a, a, you know less than 1% chance that the side branch uh, has a pinch or has closed means we are talking about subtotal to total occlusion of the side branch it will be easier to rewire uh, quickly leaving the side branch behind the stent struts and the final would be when this kind of a disparity if you see the left main almost uh, we are talking of 4 to 4 5 and you have your LAD which is uh, between 3 to 3 5 what would be your stent I mean uh, what kind of uh, what size stent and uh, most important is uh, how would uh, um, you you know your post dilatation strategy that uh, would you use IVAS to make sure that uh, the left main portion of the stent has been uh, fully opposed uh, and post dilatation is very important to make sure there is uh, uh, well opposition uh, in the disparity of the uh, size of the left main as well as uh, LED. Anu excellent points and uh, I think uh, the important part here is to understand that even a person as experienced as you keeps these things in the back of the mind. Uh, Samin uh, take okay. us through the didactic, uh, what is the relevance of this, uh, what are the trials to support your strategy? Perfect therefore now, now while uh, Anu will get um, the catheter and uh, get, take some baseline IVAS pictures and see, uh, I will just take you through uh, quickly, uh, we are starting at uh, 8.20 in about next 8-10 minutes about rest of the angiogram uh, the message of uh, the uh, today and that is because a lot is being come uh, being published now on the correlation of the IVAS and FFR for the intermediate lesions because we knew about there were cut off individual cut off uh, whether it is IVAS or FFR but now how do they both correlate and then of course the left main still remains that uh, enigma or you can say the controversy that who should get PCI, who should get coronary artery bypass surgery, knowing that we do not have a dedicated left main trial, uh, the large number of cases also, although some of them we recently just published uh, uh, with the I, with the compare uh, compare group, the that uh, the pre combat and uh, the Lehman's are the small trials, but we still need a definite trial. Now basically, the question is the correlation. We know that when we talk about FFR, we are talking about the lesion, uh, the gradient across the lesion uh, in the epicardial vessel under hyperemia. And then for the IVAS, is basically we are just measuring the lumen. So there are two different things. One is uh, trying to evaluate the functional or physiological significance, other one is the anatomical significance. And if you combine all, the from proximal to distal microvasculature that becomes CFR which we know that we do not use at present too much. Uh, the, then of course the reference when you want to decide that if patient has diffuse disease then that is called CFR reference is the CFR of the vessel divided by the reference vessel and this is come, comes out to be the reference CFR. Now we also know that there are moderate many time intermediate lesions and they actually uh, otherwise significant because patient has chest pain patient a positive stress test significant ischemia but angiographically looks only moderate therefore that you can do a IVAS and really calculate the lumen cross sectional area many of them like case shown here it is very significant less than 2 millimeter square. So now what has been shown that in the old literature of the 4 millimeter cut off uh, based on that if you are less than 4 millimeter your high event rate more than 4 millimeter you can defer the intervention and that led to that criteria that the 4 millimeter in the epicardial vessel became the cut off for intervention so because they associate with mace. Now for the left main that number is 6 millimeter square and this is what we have been practicing for a while. Now but yet there has been a no randomized trial which showed that doing the IVAS changes patients long term prognosis particularly with the DES. There are some data with the BMS but not really with the DES. Only data comes close in the prognostic significance of IVAS is the left main uh, from the, um, the left main compare registry and secondly from the Washington hospital about the drug looting stent registry data that IVAS versus no IVAS that IVAS is associated with a lower stent thrombosis but no difference in mace and this is the main compare showing the mortality advantage again not a randomized trial that IVAS guidance was the angiographic guidance had a uh, the lower mortality with the IVAS and these are the data we have from the left main uh, compared data from uh, Korea. Now compared to that 
we have a immense amount of data for the FFR and classic being the you know defer trial and then the FAME trial. Now, we have the two year data that uh, avoid the PCI if your FFR is more than 0.8 even if angiographically it is 80 or 90 percent lesion and showed that uh, by avoiding the uh, some of the PCI of these lesions although significant uh, by FFR guidance associated with the lower cost, uh, lower contrast use and overall lower event rate um, therefore, uh, good outcome uh, at up to even 2 years and then we have those data up to 2 years uh, recently published in JAK. So, basically the FFR now is not only just a simple functional physiological significance, but it is predictive of your how the follow up event and the, that actually has become now that functional revascularization using FFR in the cath lab of the significant angiographic lesion can appropriately select lesions who will benefit from PCI without compromising patient safety and will result in less MI, mace, stent use and reduce procedural cost. It should be done in cases with 50 to 70 percent lesion before proceeding to PCI or some people will say 40 to 70 percent lesion. Now, then question comes that which lesion will have FFR or less than 0.8 or, or more than 0.8 based on an angiogram. As you can see here very clearly that if your lesion is significant whether it is a 70 or 90 percent that FFR of less than 0.8 is present in majority. But if your lesion the very rarely significant lesion will have a FFR of more than 0.8 the way the significant basically means more than 70 percent. So, the very very clear. Now, also at the same time that angiographically which looks like a 2 or 3 vessel disease you can reclassify and that was done in the FAME trial that you reclassify those vessels to 0, 1 and 2 vessel disease and 3 vessel disease and turns out to be that although many of these patients had 2 and 3 vessel disease that after reclassification some of them became no significant disease. A very important the, the, the you should reclassify angiographic CAD to the functional CAD based on the I and FFR and we also learned tighter lesion will have a, a higher the chances that will have a low FFR of 0.8. Now, then question comes that the many time it the, the angiographically there is a disc correlation difference reason is particularly for the left main as you can see in this uh, uh, very nice paper about that even if you take a FFR of less than 0.8 and angiographically for the left main the less than 50 percent see in the left lower quadrant there are many patients will have a low the FFR of less than 0.8, but yes have a angiographically less than 50 percent because that is very true for the left main. So, equivocal left main is very common and we know that these patients who have low FFR will do worse even your angiographically looks only 50 percent and that is a very important message we learned for this equivocal um, lesions and particularly from the uh, IVAS uh, and FFR correlation which I will show you subsequently, but for the moderate or intermediate, intermediate lesions. Now, and then of course, uh, that if you uh, do the PCI uh, and the FFR is more than 0.8, they do fine at long term. Now, therefore, in last uh, I would say 6 months, there have been about 3 papers, nicely done papers which try to correlate IVAS with FFR in this day and age. There are some old data, but now the present data uh, basically uh, actually I will go through it and it turns out to be that the cutoff which we had of 4 millimeter square and so it is strictly for a epicardial vessel proximal segment which is about 3 millimeter and so, but really once you go to the other vessels mid distal branch point that turns out to be the 2.4 millimeter square actually has a high sensitivity and specificity and positive predictive value. If you have more than 2.4 millimeter square the chances your FFR will be positive is only uh, the 4 or 5 percent positive means less than 0.8, but if your FFR if your MLA is less than 2.4 particularly in small vessels that chances your FFR will be less than 0.8 is about 60 70 percent. So, this also depends on the lesion length plaque burden as shown in this uh, study. So, they basically came up with this new criteria of 2.4 I would say more so for the small vessel rather than uh, the large vessels and of course, with the 4 millimeter square still remain for 3. So, now what is the concept really evolving? that the optimal IVAS criteria and their accuracy for defining the functional significance of intermediate coronary stenosis at different location means FFR of 0.8. Now, if you think about that presence of myocardial ischemia is determined by both the lesion severity and the amount of myocardium supplied. 
physiological significance of a minimum lumen area by IVUS will or should be different according to lesion location or the amount of myocardium supplied. Hence, single cutoff value of MLA will not be correct for all the coronary vasculature and this is the basic message now that clearly you cannot have a one cutoff value which we had in the past and how do you say that? This is a very nice paper done by uh, University of Korea. It is not the park group, the other group from the National University of Korea. They correlated uh, about uh, 200 plus cases and if you can see there that these were the 40 to 70 percent angiographic lesion and if you go with the FFR that define disease means that if it is less than 0.8 that your accuracy or predictive value goes is very variable. For the proximal LED 54 percent, but you go to the mid LED and you go to the RCN circumflex becomes very small and that they showed in this uh, nice diagram with a positive predictive value of FFR and I was based on the vessel segment. So, basically in simply what I can say that uh, we need to redefine our cutoff. I think redefine our cutoff that proximal vessels of the RCA LED particularly and circumflex 4 millimeter square is good. But if you are talking about mid to distal vessel, when the vessel size is about 2.5 millimeter and so the cutoff should be anywhere between 2.5 to 3 and I think it is right now we should there should be a momentum to change that number to 3 millimeter square and I think that is the right thing to do. Now then question comes we will decide based on the FFR versus IVUS, you will do more PCI based on the IVUS versus FFR although what is right we do not know because outcome is not changed whether you do IVUS guided versus FFR as shown in this uh, study by uh, Parks group from again from Korea. The second issue remain with the left main as I mentioned inappropriate there is lot of trials have been done at present. Uh, more important is that now for the left main subset uh, the which has been in the uh, in the syntax trial if you take a Mackey that actually does not look too bad uh, compared to a, the in a cabbage versus uh, Texas DES and very important is the interaction of the syntax score tertiary that if you have a low syntax score, guess what? Cabbage have a higher mortality and status the and trend towards higher stroke rate. Uh, and uh, the, of course, there is a, a revascularization is a slightly different, but key is that higher mortality at the low syntax score of 0 to 22. Now, if you take 23 to 32, same story, higher cabbage mortality. So, now if you combine these two groups, that is from 0 to 32 syntax uh, score, guess what happened? This is the just published in uh, uh, in uh, European Heart Journal that low to intermediate score in the syntax trial not a huge number of patients about 400 patients that cabbage 196 PCI 221 and if you have the low syntax low to intermediate syntax score nine, the mortality is 9 percent with cabbage PCI is one third with a significant p value of 0 0.02 and of course the CVA trend towards lower no difference in MI the combined of course favors PCI uh, and revascularization non statistically significant. So, it really really this field is evolving that if you have a just a low to intermediate score left main probably PCI is better compared to cabbage although as I mentioned that we do not have the randomized trial answering that specific question. But yes once you go to the high syntax score so left main usually they will have extensive three vessel disease PCI loses as shown uh, in this. Uh, analysis of the syntax score of 33 and above and therefore, I think it has to be that it no longer should be inappropriate and of course, we know the guidelines have changed becoming a 2A uh, in at present and for austere lesion I think we could be uh, even uh, follow the our European guidelines. That lead to my last, uh, last slide on this particular case and that is the Excel trial which is being launched now. It is a randomized multi center trial. Uh, of uh, will be about 140 centers across the globe and 40 percent of these 2600 patients will be done in the United States. They will be uh, the syntax score has to be less than 33, they have left main 1, 2 or 3 vessel disease with syntax score of less than 32, uh, I mean 33. They will be randomized to Zion V prime Everlumus eluting stent of uh, Abbott versus coronary artery bypass surgery with the primary endpoint, which is what approved by the FDA now that death large MI or stroke with a high one increase in rank and scale at a median of uh, 3 years uh, with every patient have a 2 year follow up. Then there are major secondary endpoint that is the composite of death MI and stroke at 30 days 
stroke at 30 days because they are very much concerned about the stroke and unplanned revascularization at 3 years and of course, the MACI at 3 years. In the trial, there will be another big arm of the 1000 patient universal registry and that basically will tell us that which patient how do we manage this left main. So, this trial is a very important trial and is ready to launch and start enrolling the patients very uh, quickly. Now, with that note, I think we just come back to Anno now and she has done the IVAS and will update us that what is happening with the IVAS now. So, I mean uh, excellent uh, uh, summary of what uh, what is relevant for this case. Uh, what are you deciding in this case, uh, IVAS or uh, FFR? We actually have completed the IVAS. Uh, we uh, did the IVAS uh, from uh, almost uh, if you see the angiogram. So, we are going to be looking for a criteria of 6 millimeter square MLA yeah. for the left main. Good. Yeah. So, now we have uh, uh, we LAD prox and then you have LAD mid. I think uh, Pablo, you, you uh, let yeah, it I start running. Yeah. Yeah, but the lesion actually mid, uh, you are starting there. Yeah. If you see there, so not yet, not yet. Moderate calcification there. Yeah, and right more there. More severe there. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, this is coming like 2.5. Okay. Where is this area exactly? Uh, that's on the angiogram area. at the level of that uh, second diagonal. Okay. Uh, yeah, second diagonal, the exactly at there, and then uh, pull back quickly. So you show the prox. Um, then this is that. Uh, first diagonal and then at the prox uh, we are getting uh, 5.2 yeah right about there right about that okay and not That's much calcification in the distal not in the prox main. but the other one yes and then now the left main is tricky in the sense eccentric it's right. you uh, we are just now come entering in the left main so very eccentric plaque so if you take the circumference just around there, we are getting a 3.4. Probably the tightest there and yes, yeah. you can. Now, there, there you see that eccentric, you start seeing the circ coming in. So, you have to go a little bit inside just there. Yeah. I think we are yeah, just around there, we are getting 3.4 itself. But if you see in the longitudinal view, long long view, show the long view, how eccentric the lesion is. And very calcific. Yeah. Cal you see the third, uh, it is very, uh, you can see that it is uh, eccentric. Yeah, right there, Pablo. Uh, this way, put your arrow. Bring back, 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 right there. back, back, back. Right there. If you right. see, it's yeah. eccentric. Yeah. So, with this information, so, what uh, what device are you going to do some plaque modification? Yeah, I think uh, yeah. The, here we may have to change our uh, strategy right now. Uh, change to San Francisco. Yeah, I think the, the because of very high calcium. Look at that. The big, uh, almost napkin ring calcium. Uh, that uh, will give us a trouble in terms of stent expansion. Yeah. Uh, it will be reasonable that we use a 2 o bar uh, in that area. No, it is very uh. like that angle, 175 bar. 175, then 175 you can do from here. Yeah, okay. 175, then 175, no, no. then we can use uh, 175. And uh, other thing is, uh, I will take, take me for a moment through the motion. Uh, why did you, Samin mentioned 2.0, you mentioned 175, what is your concern? Uh, 17, no, no, truly uh, the, based on the lumen that we saw, he wanted a. Yeah, see, the right now you have lumen of 2 millimeter on the IVAS. Right. Yeah. So, the, you want to get l just at least, if you get 1.75, can go through the lesion without even touching it. That is no. why you need at least 2 millimeter. So, okay. I have taken the multiple. If you see this particular, if you see the angiogram, is the angiogram playing? Okay, you know what? I can yes. have to show like, you the. Yeah. Wait. I have to show you the real. Uh, so, we took few views. The qu question always comes is the same that we thought 6 French is the right thing and you always make sure that your ostium truly is not involved. In your, in the caudal picture that we took, the ostium of the cirque was hidden um, and uh, here I think we opened it up and it is uh, angiographically we do not see there is disease that we could plan, we go ahead uh, as planned that we strength across. But okay. if you look at this particular uh, picture, I think uh, the distal left main eccentric lesion and the way the LED takes off. That is why I think though Dr. Sharma mentioned it is a 2 of bar, it is better we go. If you see it is angular, you see uh, some yes. angle at the uh, ostium of the LED and not to go with the 2 of bar, even if it is a short segment, better we go with the 175 bar. All right. So, change to a 7 French guide. 
Yeah, 1.75 can go through it because remember you may need a little bigger bar. Right. Uh, the go. second, if let's say it goes through it, 1.75 will be very good for that proximal to mid LED lesion. Yeah. But if you need to do a proximally with a 2O, your 6 millimeter will be a limitation. You now the question yeah. also come based on the IVAS, uh, I, uh, are we going to take care of the mid LED? I would say so. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. Then we have to do 175 bar, yeah. 2 bar will be too no, big. No, that is understood, but I think you can do 2 bars in this particular case. Then you have to change the guide. Yeah. Your seventh French time. Samin, how often are you using a, a strategy which is non single bar? Yeah, no, but the long but majority of them are single bar. Uh, the only question comes remains uh, uh, is that what is the right um, uh, that at least your size of the bar uh, as long as it is uh, just about 0.5 of the vessel size, but more importantly has to be the close to the lesion. Uh, but the minimum lumen diameter that if you have a minimum lumen diameter of 2 plus and you are using 1.5 1.75 bar no matter how eccentric the plaque is bar will deflect and will just not do any ablation so that was my concern here that yes we may need a 1.75 although we never wanted the plan was not to do the uh, i was uh, uh, the i mean rotablation in this particular case but, but since we did the i was that you change the strategy uh, and that may be the right thing because if you see the fluoro wise there was a lot of calcium in this vessel right but well, angel, in that area but not necessarily at the lesion but i was really told the different story it's a very significant uh, lesion everywhere uh, calcium cross. lesion so i mean i thought i actually like the design of the excel trial we are making uh, such important decision based on about 200 odd patients in that subgroup from syntax yeah. so 2600 will teach us a lot yeah. No, and they are also mandated that if your lesion is 50 to 70 percent, you need to do two things. Uh, unless there is a severe ischemia that you need to do, uh, that will be the only exclusion. Otherwise, you had it mandates that you need to do either IVAS or FFR. Actually, in the syntax trial, they are favoring more uh, the more uh, uh, the IVAS than FFR. They say preferably you have to do IVAS and lesion has to be more than. Uh, uh, the lumen cross section area of less than 0.6 or you can do a FFR and of course 0.8. Plaque modification in the Excel trial is left to the discretion of the Discretion, operator. yes. And they actually knew that uh, many of these cases are calcific. So that they, they are uh, the quite emphasis on uh, the adequate plast uh, plaque uh, modification and uh, requiring rotational atherectomy, angiosculpt or cutting balloon uh, to get the good results. Anu, without knowing the results of IVAS in this patient, you would have used a cutting balloon? Yeah. Yes, for the distal left main. Right. But uh, if we were planning, I think uh, I would say the mid LAD lesion, you, could, you will see a tram track cal calcium in that, uh, in, the, in, in the angiogram. So mean now, uh, going back to the, I think uh, what uh, the slide Dr. Sharma showed about the patient that what if we had done a FFR in this particular uh, case. So we are talking about three lesion in this uh, particular patient. You have a uh, uh, distal left main, then you have prox LED and then we have a mid to distal LED. So we will have to be very careful, um, you know, once you start your adenosine infusion that how you are going to do it. It definitely will be positive uh, when if when you leave it uh, in the uh, LED distal uh, because it is after three lesions and then you have to pull back, uh, probably stop the adenosine for a uh, a couple of minutes and redo it for the mid and same thing redo it for the um, LA, uh, left main. So, I mean many questions have come up uh, since your presentation. The first one is that uh, is uh, your primary strategy for these uh, low syntax cases uh, clearly PCI today? Yes, absolutely. The actually you know we the in the past we had the protocol that we will get and discuss the left mains with our surgeons and so. This with the low syntax score left mains, we do not even call the surgeons, but high syntax score, whether it's a left main or no left main, pay of 33 and above, knowing that there is a mortality advantage of, of uh, uh, that mortality advantage of uh, the of the bypass surgery. Those patients, unless have known contraindication before the procedure, that will come out of the cath room, then surgical consultation will be made, obtained, and then only if need to be done PCI then PCI will be done on that day a little later or at a later stage. Uh, now many of these patients even we recommend and I tell everybody that yes, uh, the biggest uh, issue is Die. that uh, many times we recommend the bypass surgery but uh, 
the biggest default for the bypass good the biggest default for the bypass is the patient do not want the patient don't uh, refuse surgery but that's okay as long as we are given all the options and uh, till it is mandated by the guidelines because remember if it clearly makes it that the insurance carrier decides that you know unless your if your syntax is score 33 pci will not be reimbursed then probably will change and i think the subsequent guidelines will be very aggressive uh, in this regard that if your syntax uh, of a 33 that those patients preferably uh, preferably should get a bypass surgery and let patient be the burden of it that you are going to get that you are going to uh, get the uh, if you want to go for PCI, probably you have out of uh, pocket expense. Now you we uh, exchange for a rotor wire there with the. Yeah, yep. yeah. What happened is, uh, since the distal left main was angulated, we did yeah, not uh, go with the rotor wire directly. Though, so we went with a fine cross fielder. Now exchanging to the rotor wire. Excellent. Because to me, in multiple lesions alone, left main, I would say would have gone very easy. But multiple lesions, just it will take you less time. So either fine cross or your 1.5 balloon and you just uh, cross, uh, change it. So now we have started with a 1.75 bar which goes through 6 French but for 7 French you can take up to 2.15 bar uh, but in this particular case we will see how much ablation it does for the distal LED, I mean distal left main of course it will do for LED. If the distal left main ablation is not done and passes through then we need to go to the 2 or 2.15 bar but if I had done some reasonable ablation then we will not uh, uh, upgrade the uh, bar size because many well, times even a small uh, bar ablation is completely fine because lesions are very eccentric. So, you just have to cut that calcific plaque so that your uh, vessel will extend, the lesion will extend very well, expand very well and uh, good stent opposition. I'm so, we surprised. checked the speed outside the body, it is about 155, 158 and uh, other important thing we have an ACT that is at uh, 330 with the angiomax. Uh, this now, uh, we are doing this unprotected left main uh, with a you know, mild LV dysfunction. Very important is how do you prepare the patient that uh, we definitely not going to use uh, balloon pump support knowing that it is a mild LV dysfunction is always you have to check an EDP before the procedure which we did and he had an EDP of about uh, 12. So, he already has got about uh, 800 of uh, hydration by now. I mean this was exactly what one of the observant uh, viewers had asked that previously you did such cases with the supporting. Yeah. Uh, how is that uh, changed over uh, the last uh, year or so? No, I would say, yeah, you keep doing. Now, I would say in the past, uh, we, our better learning and understanding of the devices, the easier, we didn't used to struggle in the past, right? I mean in the, the with the old stent, with the old stent we used to struggle. Now we don't struggle, the stents goes without any problem they are better expanded uh, and so and so forth. So, the, I think the things have changed. So, the quick, the better device technology, better stent delivery system, better stent expansion so which we obtain nowadays uh, has really changed our philosophy uh, that you do th these uh, devices you need but not in all cases in selected cases. Now, if this case has ED EDP, good. That in this case uh, if you have an EDP of uh, 24 patients in heart failure blood pressure is uh, 90, I would use a balloon pump, not impella in this particular case where EF about 45 percent and so, uh, uh, but uh, these cases we know uh, that you can do it without and now uh, we actually more and more data coming up that in a randomized setting actually balloon pump is not winning, uh, so much so latest one being the crisp AMI in the acute myocardial infarction uh, and uh, then the BCI trial in elective patients that balloon pump did not give any additional advantage. So, that is where uh, in this particular case at present I would have no uh, issue that um, uh, we would not even think Take about putting should the balloon pump. So, I mean there is a question here yeah. would oh. wiring the circumflex would have been an overkill? Yeah, not yet. No, I would we will leave one wire into that ramus, yeah. One of the vessel will leave the wire, not at this time, it is not uh, overkill. <coughs> no, question is, comes uh, in, uh. it is not overkill, I would say it is indicated. Yeah, that is fine. Side side. What is the role of no, no. Uh, platelet uh, uh, reactivity studies here? Yeah. Okay. Now, the now, did we do any platelet reactivity on him yet? Because he has a history of remote GI bleed. Right. We have just loaded him with Plavix. Yeah. So, he just got a Plavix and we also learned that unless it is a diabetic or hmm? yeah. high risk patient, yeah. I, I think what you need to do is a patient with a stent thrombosis, yeah. 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 left me. 
No, yeah. give me the wire, right? No, but do, are we going to go to the 2 o bar for the proximal segment or we are happy? You mean here? Yeah. Just the distal left I think line. we can do a 2 o bar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. give me 2 o. Yeah, no, the basically in this particular case based on our uh, the data which we know so far uh, as uh, that you of course want to be sure that this patient is fully uh, reactive on clopedigrel, but uh, just uh, without unless you th there is since there is no clear cut data to support that routine testing will change this patient's prognosis. It is completely fine that you just give um, the clopedigrel and uh, uh, and then do your intervention. Now, what we have done that uh, all these patients just to be sure that a small group that if you do those are who are refractory, they will have a higher event rate. So, that you want to be sure that these patients will do well. So, that what we will do is in these kind of cases uh, that when we want a dependable platelet inhibition, so that patient before discharge tomorrow and in this particular case with the left main and so, it will be important to just document that yes patient does not have any kind of uh, uh, the, the, the interaction and the clopidogrel is quite effective. So, that uh, we will get a, um, the, the a testing by the acumetrics device with the platelet reactive unit and that number actually is also changing. In the past used to be 240 then 230, now everybody says it should be about 208. So, the platelet reactive unit of 208 is fine on platelet on antiplatelet therapy, but if it is more than 208 that means, the, there is not adequate inhibition and those patients uh, should get either double dose of clopidogrel or you should get a press uh, the presagrel or ticagrelor because ticagrelor also has shown uh, in those patients who are refractory or not um, those uh, clopidogrel non responsive that they do very well. So, that um, uh, therefore, those are the three options we have. We routinely do not give 150 milligram of clopidogrel which why, many why people do yeah. that many people do based on the uh, OSS trial, but remember OSS was the trial of acute coronary syndrome that in a elective patients I think giving 150 milligram uh, routinely may be associated with some issues. So, that we do not give it routinely. This is a 2 over. Yeah, this is a 2 over now go as you see that sometime just uh, advance it with a little bit of dinaglide and we are just going to concentrate on the distal left main the segment yeah yeah not going to the led with this yeah. good right good sine and i am assuming the patient tolerated very well no problem yeah now other question comes is same unprotected left main need for pacemaker uh, i think all depends uh, on the patient's age and what kind of a conduction uh, this patient has a normal sinus rhythm since is only 68 with no EKG showing uh, no uh, conduction defect problem it will be okay not to use a, pay a temporary wire. Yeah, many time we have seen when we were doing a left main and protected left main intervention uh, rotablation uh, and uh, that you are doing a kissing balloon dilatation and so the patient developing uh, the bradycardia and um, sometimes asystole short period. So, those cases of course, uh, may therefore, we, what we recommended that uh, cases where heavily calcified you are doing a double vessel intervention and rotablation that you should put a uh, temporary pacemaker, but that is kind of a more optional. I it is definitely mandated I would say in the dominant vessel if you are working on it the right okay. or the circumflex. Anu, yes. one more duration of bivalirudin uh, post procedure? Uh, no, uh, uh, in this particular patient same the question will be uh, he was just loaded with Plavix 600 milligrams uh, this morning um, and uh, due to remote history of GI bleed probably 2 B 3 A should not be given unless it is really needed uh, in which situation I think we will continue Angiomax uh, even after uh, the procedure to finish the bag yeah. means that uh, at least or one hour, one yeah, hour. That the pro protocol is that we give the on the clopidogrel naive patients uh, or if you are not loaded up with the um, uh, the presagrel that those patients should get one hour infusion knowing that it takes 120 minutes for uh, other antiplatelet therapy to work, but I think that should change with both ticagrel or as well as with presagrel because the onset of action is 40 45 minutes compared to 120 to 150 minutes with a 600 milligram of uh, uh, clopidogrel. 
what percentage of your patients are already yeah. on uh, prasugrel now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah therefore now. Three stands. Uh, hmm? Now it will need yeah. us for three stands. The, yeah. Therefore, uh, the, I would say that number actually has decreased now since we stopped testing uh, the testing routinely. Uh, but it's still about 25 percent of cases at present. We have not started using ticagrelor or yet. But uh, about 25 percent of patients are getting um, the the prasugrel in our cath lab. Now, yeah. You have to go to the high lateral. Yeah, that's fine. Go to the high lateral. You cannot see it here. Okay. And what wire is that? This is the fielder wire. Okay. And we have put a run so through the LED. Yes, I noticed that. Uh, yeah, good. So that we have left it in the high lateral. Yeah. Because yeah. the branch of the high lateral. You go in the main vessel then? Yeah. Some back. Yeah, this go. Oh. Okay. Good. Yeah, we'll leave the highlight we we'll do the LED more. Good. Okay, we have balloon now 3 o. Uh, see the last picture they would decide now. Now we need a 3 o. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. You think that's a little calcification or some dissection no, at the No, it's all like calcification, yeah. Okay. And the okay. distal. I think we need to take care of the mid and proximal lesion, 3 o 20 high pressure. So, you do not think you could directly place the stent here? Having seen so much calcium probably yes. not, okay. yeah. but then you uh, invariably will uh, end up post dilatation and maybe under expanded stent. Is huh? no. Oh, you mean that to that? Yeah. Will. Yeah. So, I mean what would be your duration of dual antiplatelet therapy in this patient? Yeah. yeah. No. Still, uh, uh, yes, uh, still one year. One year. Yeah, I think that's uh, more and more. And remember the the latest trial uh, by showing that whether six months versus twenty four months, they actually did not have a arm of uh, of uh, twelve months. That uh, twenty four months was associated with more bleeding. So that uh, somewhere time period is between six to twenty four months with the new generation stents, and that is the key. What is being recommended as a part of XL? The XL is one year. Of what? A uh, one year of antiplatelet therapy, which could be any. Either of the three. In Either of the three. Okay. Yep. And they also said that in some cases you want to give a 150 milligram of uh, the clopidogrel the for uh, the, the f 7 to 28 days, which is also okay, without testing. Okay. Almost mm -hmm. Oasis 7 modified yep. regime. Right. Yeah. So okay. That's this three o uh, volume. Three o twenty. Okay. NC Voyager. Yeah. Okay. Non compliant. So, I mean, you've had any cases of unprotected left main done with the bare metal stent? Yeah, we actually have. Now, that's where the important point also this 4 millimeter DES, you can take it to a 4.75 and so, but if it is 5, that will be a major issue. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, that in our, if vessel is 5 plus millimeter, I think the putting a DES uh, may, you can avoid putting a DES. Yeah. Because uh, door, uh, opening that or uh, stent up position and you want to get to a 5.4 may not give you good results. Now, we know that randomized trial of the Texas versus BMS showed that the even in the vessel, but not for 5 millimeter, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, otherwise you did not do distal at all. Yeah. No, we did yeah, it. Picture. No, left main I mean. Oh, we do not want yeah. it. Now good. the question comes, yeah. so you want to put yeah. an eye on? Anu, yeah. take me through your logic. Yeah. Why did you not try, you, you are happy with the distal left main? With no, the no, 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 it's a 20, milli, question, 20 yeah. millimeter balloon. Got yeah. it. The yeah, question was that we, we actually we'll be, have 3.515. Yeah, yeah. It's a 20 yeah. millimeter yeah. balloon and we will be uh, dilating, uh, you know, the prox. Uh, so, no. two, two long stents, what, what are you planning? No, that is what we are deciding. Can we do one stent? Uh, that means you have to use a different stent. In yeah. the well, actually, yeah, the question is, and that is what uh, the platinum uh, uh, the with the paclitaxel coated, the platinum stent of uh, Boston Scientific ion is becoming uh, because one stent, which is 38 millimeter, till we have the Zions Prime, which will be 38 also, uh, that um, you could use one stent, but I think this will be more than one. So, quickly, let us use two stents there. So, 3-5 yeah. for the no, LED and the, the high lateral. High lateral, we will leave it right now. Yeah, though we need to take care of the 2 in the LED. Okay. Okay. And then the stent across in the left. Middle. Right. Anu, yeah. can I make your job yeah. easier by telling you 5 minutes left? Yes. Yeah. Good. 
Go, bring it. Okay. Three no, point, no. 3.5, 23 and 28 is iron. This is not 35 SLSs. The distal is 30. Okay. One, uh, give us a. 3028. 3028. And a 3523. Yeah. Yep. And then the left main, same, we will put a 40 and then we have to uh, go back and uh, just dilate uh, uh, with a cross, um, uh, with a kissing balloon dilatation. I know you remember what was the diameter uh, by Ivers for the uh, the distal segment of the mid segment of yeah, the Yeah, uh, it will have uh, uh, like 3.3, .3, between 3, about 3.3, .3 where that the tightest plaque was. The we are going with the 3, I think uh, 3 or stent. Because you go with the smaller stent, we may have to post dilate it. Okay. I personally thought you would use a 3.5, but uh, post dilating uh, will get us there too. Right. Yeah, the actually if you see that even original stent not fully, ex balloon full did not fully expand, there was still a little lip of calcium left uh, on one side. Therefore, uh, we may have to do a little more aggressive post dilatation. So, that is okay, you dial, put a, insert the 3 O and then we post dilate uh, with the 3.25 or 3.5. So, I mean just being curious, uh, what uh, live cases did you decide to transmit Go. to India? Go. Also the left main. Excellent. Go. That is what uh, yeah. is the big uh, requirement there. Yeah, everywhere. It's a, yeah. tri a trifurcating left main. It is a trifurcating left main. Actually, next week we have in the national conference of uh, um, Karachi, uh, you know from Pakistan association and they actually also want a left main. Done. Uh, two days. That is actually two days relay. Uh, now, see the proximal part is still had not fully expanded, therefore, uh, Good. Yeah, you probably need three stents here, no? No, no, I think uh, the No, but means that including left main, yes, including left main, we here will be 3.5. No, we yeah. leave a gap there. Yeah, we then can leave a gap a because that area is completely fine, but still will need 3.5, 3 stents. 23. This is so restless. So, this was the 3.0 of Zions. 3.0 yeah. of uh, Zions. Uh, 28. 28. So, I mean for your left mains, uh, what proportion do you think uh, are getting uh, either a balloon pump or impeller now? Uh, I would say about, you know, it used to be when we started, uh, the used to be almost 40 percent. Now, that number is in low teens, 13, 15 percent and so. Based on just experience or data? Both. I think more, more is uh, just personal experience. Right. That I think uh, with the same. That uh, we, we kind of have go, you know, going oh, away from this is it. We'll put a four or twelve left main. Yeah, will be fine. Go four or twelve. Yeah. So you're going to leave the what about 15. the mid segment there? Yeah, that we're putting it now, yes. and uh, the question yeah, is, we uh, need to post dilate with a three point five. Three point five. We actually have three point five fifteen balloon there. Mm. High pressure. Yeah. We'll do the both purpose with that. Same, you can see it. Nice overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, so, one cell overlap. Yes. Yep, that is all. So, I mean, Done. would there have been any role of OCT in this kind of a case? Well, I mean, I think the IOS and OCT is good because we are learning Done. more on the OCT point of view, or 2 millimeter in, mm. that, uh, that basically the what exactly uh, the uh, role will be in clinical utility because one of the big issue that while you are doing IOS, you can bookmark where the lesion is and so with the OCT, it is very tough uh, because it is a very rapid pullback that where uh, the, your tightest lesion, where your calcium is and so good. Fine. Yeah, but give it time, I think yeah. uh, that is a very easy software function yeah. to install. But, uh, but the resolution, there is no Amazing question about it. Yeah. It is just okay. unbelievable. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. This is a new group. Please. Okay. Yeah, down. Yeah. When would you be sending this patient home? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, yes. yes. For a 12 or 15 stent for the left main. Huh? It will come lot in the, remember yeah. later on if you have to do yeah. the high lateral. Okay. Huh? You have to 15? still across. 15. 4 or 15 will yeah. take there. I yeah. think we do not need a post dilatation, right? You are yeah. good? No. Take a picture. Huh? Okay. Your patient getting little restless now. Not uncommon. Yeah. Things are looking good except the one it. area in the mid LED. Huh? Leave it. Okay. Yeah, now question is the left main we still need to post dilate yeah. first. Get us a 12, right? You want four to put a 15. Uh, yeah, no, uh, we 
No, no, no. Let's pose, uh, pose oh, right you still want hand. to do a cutting balloon of the left main? No. Okay. Then we have. Yeah, I think with the two or bar, oh, I very probably no, no need to no, do yeah, that. Yeah, that no? done the job. The, that's the stand, but we need to post dilate. Uh, with I mean, the twelve. Pre dilate uh, with the. Yeah. What this is, is a three point five fifteen. Why oh, you want to put a fifteen and a fifteen stand? Yeah, that's okay. We we'll just the compare it. Yeah. If you open the, yeah, you're right. I mean, the uh, always you want to pre dilate. Okay. Get us a three five twelve. Yeah. Or why not? Uh, yeah, three point five twelve. Okay. What do you want? We got 4 o? No, 4 o, but that's 4 o, yeah. 4 o 12. Yeah, that actually is very important also. What is mandated in the protocol of the Excel that dilate the pre dilate the vessel like left main or osteal to 1 to 1. So that you are putting up, uh, you think it's a 4 o vessel, you pre dilate with a 4 o. So, the, and therefore, that with that strategy, because we, you know, uh, we are still waiting for the FDA clearance uh, and the CMS letter for us, but we already have patients. Uh, uh, lined up, you know, screened. They're waiting for the randomization in the trial, uh, but um, uh, we probably will not start uh, for another one month. Uh, that will require for uh, for getting the regulatory CMS approval. Now, this case, okay, yeah, good. Now, this particular case, after, yeah, good. yeah that uh, the, the the this particular case in the end, if you you started the IVAS, should get the IVAS. Because IVAS will tell you that even if angiographically looks good, uh, that uh, you may require another high pressure balloon. Now, here are 14. I know going from your uh, initial slide where you talked about the challenges, this yeah. is the situation with the guide wire. No issues at all, you are not concerned. Of uh, trapping the guide wire? Yeah. No. Yeah. And what wire do you have there? Uh, that is a fielder. Okay. We have a fielder in the. Good. It becomes it's very symptomatic when you even dilate. Dilate, yeah. So now this is also important. You pay attention to the hemodynamics. His pressure went down to less than hundred. So now that we know he's well hydrated, that uh, we have to tell the nurse give uh, neosinephrine. So the pressure is uh, way high. So when we are going with the left main stent, uh, so you have a good blood pressure. That's your pharmacological balloon. Yeah, problem. that's pharmacological yeah. balloon. So you everything is ready. Yeah. Okay, Neo. Right? Yeah, so because right now, although pressure is 140, yeah, give one of Neo, one is good. Go. go. But it is going to go down so that you prepare Fish. it, you know, uh, kind of so that that 10 15 seconds where you need a full uh, expansion. I, I do it. this yeah. routinely yeah. in STEMI interventions right. uh, prior to giving uh, nitroprusside or any other uh, arterial vasodilators. Advanced side wire compact. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the key. Now let's see where. Yeah, I think we just take a one quick picture. Okay, good, right? Yep, fifteen millimeter. Yeah, it looks Go good. We do, and uh, we call quit. Samin, your stent was uh, four. Uh, uh, was a twelve the balloon, millimeter. Balloon was four o twelve, and this is a four o uh, fifteen, 15 okay. zines. Got okay. it. Um, at uh, twelve atmosphere, we need to go back again with the four o and, and post dilated post high pressure. Four five. 4.5, yeah, even actually better, it is a big vessel, so the 4.5. And that is the same thing, I think when we are doing a 4.5 dilatation, we are not going to, if you see, at least uh, 4 millimeters of the stent is in the LED and the rest is in the left main. So, the 4.5 will be going with the 12. So during the entire procedure, at any time, now I noticed that, mm -hmm. had you kind of backed out the guiding catheter during any maneuvers? Uh, no, right now only. Okay. Since you know there is no disease in the austral left main and it is a long left main, there was no well, need. Only right now yeah. I did it. It is a big uh, balloon. So, he tolerated well. Um, EKG. Yep. This is. Everything looking quite good, hemodynamically fine. Same thing that we prepared him. Take a picture. Mm -hmm. So, stress thallium at 6 months? Yeah, uh, the, this actually patient had it uh, and that is also very important that even in the trial, Excel trial, it is mandated that routine angiography should not be done. Excellent. And one of the, um, the end point uh, of the revascularization is not the revascularization. It is the unplanned uh, revascularization that, uh, uh, that you know, that patient Looking came for routine angiogram, no. It has to be the patient needed uh, for clinical region. Looking excellent there. 
Yeah, so we'll just post dilate and then we should be all done. Now, uh, this, is this other five. important thing is the side branch wire has to come out when you are post dilating. Yeah. Good. And the if you really is, need, yeah. I think we'll have to recross. Yeah. Good. We recross or leave it? Yeah, right now we can leave it. This is all looking good. And the key, the key is that do you do a kissing balloon dilatation or no? It is a, a matter of uh, the skept, uh, you know, the debate. I would say, yeah, particularly since the Nordic bifurcation three. Um, I think we are done here. Uh, that bifurcation three showed that if you don't need routinely. Now in the left main, people will do routine kissing balloon dilatation. Largely, reason is that if you need to go to the side branch, you need to open that cell now. Now in the Nordic bifurcation. The left main uh, was done in about five, um, uh, five or six percent of cases, so that uh, clearly that it's not a routine practice. But uh, in uh, and that we don't have the clear cut answer. Yeah, the fourteen. Yeah, sixteen. Okay. Sixteen this atmosphere. Is four, five. This is a four point five okay. eight millimeter. How's the patient tolerating? One time yeah, yeah. It's tolerating good, and it's the same thing you see is a distal left main and uh, the the post dilatation is mostly in the left main, not in the LED portion of the stent. You want to go up here a little bit? Yeah. I'm going up. Yeah, yeah, one millimeter, yeah. right? No, one? No. I'm okay. doing approximal. Okay. 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 16. Good. I don't think I have to do the LED. Okay. Four, five, it will be too big. Yeah. I think we can do a one quick IVAS run and ra whatever need to be done later on, we can decide. Here, let me take one more picture here. What do you think the IVAS will predict? What is yeah. what do you good predict expansion? Good expansion. Yeah, and that is what basically is defined that you need a more than eight millimeter square. That once you do IVAS for the left main, you want the the left main now should be eight or eight point five millimeter going square. Probably to have uh, eleven or something. Ten yeah. and a half, eleven. Good. Okay, good IVAS quickly. Would you IVAS the mid LED too? Yeah, no. we'll do everything. Huh? Okay. 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 Let's just yeah. keep it simple. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. That is also a very important part of doing a complex intervention. Is it okay? Flash. Good. Go. Everything is done. Go. You have the wire? Yeah. Okay. We can show the IVAS now. Don't do the pullback. He'll do the pullback. Are you always doing the automated pullback or manually? Yeah, yeah, automated all the time. Okay, so Good. now this is that. Uh, okay. We're yep. just doing the uh, left main stand start. Okay, yeah. Looking good there. Yeah. Now you start seeing the stent in the LED. Are you surprised there is still that uh, degree of calcification there? No, mm -hmm. calcification will remain. Okay, we there, there. Look at this. Nice okay, look. there it looks wonderful. Yeah. Very nicely expanded. Very good stent opposition. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, now the yeah done. All right. The will comes how out. Much, we how we much, just how much is the millimeter square uh, yeah. which you got? Calculate the quick uh, millimeter square. It's probably fifteen. <laughs> yeah, Samin, <laughs> take home message. Yeah, the, we just go to our various techniques wise which I have already made uh, and the, what is the lumen cross sectional area he is uh, calculating uh, and just while uh, those two important points what we learned today. Eleven. That intermediate lesions which is, is 11 millimeter square. It is 11 millimeter square. The officially it is 11 millimeter square double digits is fantastic. Now the intermediate lesion 50 to 70 percent angiographic obstruction should undergo additional anatomical imaging. I was or OCT, OCT <coughs> I think we are learning or preferably FFR it has an important prognostic implication. What is the exception? Could be if documented severe ischemia in the territory of the vessel involved. If you have a severe ischemia and you have 60 percent lesion I think that is the only exception otherwise there should be a protocol in the cath lab like in Mount Sinai you have 50 to 70 percent lesion you are doing a PCI that it will say even for this left main our cath report will say why are you doing PCI. Have you done IVAS? Have you done FFR? And you have to answer that question before you routinely go after uh, doing the intervention on that case. Second, unprotected left main lesion with syntax score of less than 33, especially requiring single crossover stent <laughs> implantation, seems to have excellent long term outcome. To me, rather better than even cabbage, and therefore, of course, the Excel trial will be the final answer. Yeah. 
with that note up. Excellent case, uh, Anu, great skills. Uh, I, I enjoyed, uh, I think, this uh, slide which we are adding about the technical challenges uh, keeps people ahead of the game. October 18 is our uh, next session. Uh, congratulations again to you and your uh, team for uh, an outstanding so presentation. Yeah. yeah, if you can show the last picture, the caudal. I think uh, very important, I, uh, we see the circ is the way we left it. We started the pre and post of the circumflex is the same. And more important is the patient does not have chest pain, does not have EKG changes and hemodynamically is stable. So, we know we can leave everything alone. All right. And uh, in this particular case, I think we will not use 2B3A, just uh, the angiomax infusion to finish his uh, one hour now. Perfect. Excellent case, Samin. Uh, we will see you all next time, October 18. Uh, in the meantime, go to the iTunes app store and pick up your application for the iPad. Uh, we will see you next time.